We'll go right into questions. Bob, do you want to start us off? Yeah, Porter, we'll start with your two uh, point guards. They're an update on Javion. And then I know you're not lacking confidence in Los, but what have you done during the last couple of days to try to get him back on track? I think I muted you on accident. Go ahead, Kevin. Man, I had some great quotes right there. There I you used, go. <laughs> I don't know if I can remember all those. I just I gotta I gotta see if I can recap that those <laughs> words of wisdom here. Um you asked me about um with Los, all all I've done is instill how much confidence I do have in him. You know, that that, that nothing's changed. He's a two year starter. Um, you know, just so much confidence in him. He's been there day in and day out with us for two years. Um you know, for him, he just got back in the gym, worked harder, what you want. Um, we saw a film where we could have done some things better, everyone. Um, but no no doubt, next game up, next game, move back, put that, you know, behind us. And um, just that's all we've done is there's nothing, nothing but instill a tremendous amount of confidence. And then is there any update on JV on? Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a, a game time decision with JV on based on, on his pain tolerance. So we'll see um, on how, how that feels. Um, but it's, uh, um, he's progressing for sure. He's progressing for sure. It'll be a game time decision. Jesse. Before you mentioned game time decision for, for JV and depending on his status, did, did, did Mox's play uh, on Tuesday against Cincinnati? Does that give you even more confidence in him that, you know, he's, he's ready to play some minutes if, if JV and can't go. Absolutely. He had a great stretch. He gave us, I think, seven points in a row. Um, gave some confidence. And that only – you can only build on that, you know, because he just ha – he hasn't been thrust into those situations where the game's been on the line very often this year. But he is older. He's an older co – he's really confident. You know, he, he goes against Javon and Lowe's every single day, so he's confident. And um, so, absolutely. You know, just it gives us uh, – I thought he, he made some key plays to help us win that game. And he's, he gives us a, a – definitely we have confidence in him um, to help us tomorrow. Well, and, and along those lines, you, you've mentioned a couple of times wanting to keep pouring confidence into into Luke. And it seems like the last couple of games he's he's had some good moments. What's been key for him, you know, to, to be a little bit more confident and what can he take from that moving into this weekend? I think the thing with Luke is realizing that his value just is not solely – making a three. And I mean, he's done some, I mean, I thought against Houston, he had some great defense. He had a toughness, a couple of toughness plays, um, rebounding, defending. Um, he got an offensive rebound kick out. Um, he got us an extra basket there. So we're pouring into that confidence. Like, man, you can do other things. It just isn't all 100% based on if you make a three or not. And I think that's helping him with his three is shooting better too. But I'm seeing confidence in other areas of the game that's helping him. <clears throat> Appreciate it. James? Uh, you know, Porter, a little, little honey, hot tea, we'll hear that voice for you. So I'm um, not sick. I'm, I feel great. It's just uh, – uh, I know, but sometimes you can get that problem voice. in your voice. Hard, hard to get it out of there. Um, Texas is looking for their 20th win, too, um, you know, at this point. But, you, you know, when you first – you played them earlier in the year, you said they were the most – one of the most talented teams in the country. I'm sure that hasn't changed. Uh, you haven't played them in a while. Uh, how do you match up with them this time around? Yeah, I still feel that way. And, um, you know, I think they got they got so many good pieces. You know, I, I have so much respect for two, three of the guys that just absolutely play so hard on the offensive glass. And that's, that's Weaver, uh, Brock Cunningham, and Dylan Mitchell. Those guys are so valuable how much they crash the glass. You got two elite scorers. You know, I think Desu and Max are two of the best scorers in our in the country, but in our league, you got guys like Tyrese Hunter who's defending, and they got Horton defending, and um, I just think they got a great balance right now of of guys playing to their strengths, playing together. Um, we know we got to rebound, we know we got to be ball tough, um, but look, some of the teams we just look at the three teams we just played in a row: Iowa State, and Cincinnati. I mean, you have to be ball tough in those those games. Um, so we know we're going to have to be ball tough in Austin, but um, tremendous amount of respect for how they they're progressing, and I think they're playing their best they've played all year. Porter, good luck. Thank you, Gracie. 
This is the last game before Big 12 play. How is it important just for the team to do the right things and commit to making the right plays to kind of go, you know, on an upward trend heading into the tournament or into the Big 12 tournament? Yeah, you, you got to play the right way. You got to execute an offense. You got to really have awareness on defense, awareness of where Max is at all time, awareness of Sue is on the perimeter when he posts up. You got to have awareness. Hunter transition, awareness where Dylan Mitchell's in that dunker spot crashing and Brock Cunningham in that dunker spot. So you, you want to play the right way and have an awareness to be playing playing well. You have to to beat any any team in the Big 12. Um, and you want that. You want that momentum going into the tournament. You know, we felt that we were shorthanded. Obviously, John was out, Javion, and then Los filed out. And to find a way in crazy lineups that we don't even practice with it gives you confidence. It gives you confidence when you find ways to win. And going into a tournament, you, you got to play well. You got to you got to get that going. And it's another opportunity for us to do that um, against a, a very good team, obviously. But that's what we're you know trying to play well and uh, get healthy, get guys back. Uh, you know, with John and Javian. We'll go John Hooper then Bob. Yeah, hey, Porter, a little ironic that you're finishing your all-time Big 12 schedule with the team that you're jumping to the SEC with. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah, you never know what diabolical minds try to figure that out, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we understand that um, that is uh, that is what it is. So I don't, I don't know if there's a story behind it, but, I mean, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, We're it's just it. odd, ironic, weird, whatever, but uh, yeah. the question – is more about uh, the way you guys played against Cincinnati. Does that a little? Can that stand a little bit as like a microcosm for parts of the season where you're down a little bit and all of a sudden you bounce back, you get a little confidence, you start making some plays. Could be, could be. We were, we were, um, we started. You know, just in hindsight, you're studying like why. You know, it was such an emotional, physical, mentally loss uh, against Houston, and then all of a sudden we lost Javion. Like we find out that day or that. And we just came out just kind of shell-shocked. And Cincinnati came out playing for their NCAA life. And to our credit, we just we, we just grinded it and turned it and just stayed with it, stayed believing. And I think I think that's a big thing about tournament teams and teams that, that do well in February, March, is they find ways to grind it out when they're not at their best. And we've we've we have been resilient. We've, you know. We've bounced back time and time again this year. You know, you lose you lose a game or you lose two. You've never lost three in a row, but you come back and you bounce back. And uh, so that could be a microcosm. I thought we got shell-shocked for whatever reasons early. It became ugly. Then all of a sudden we were down, down personnel and we found a way to grind it out. And I think that's a trait that you can build on, that you need to build on to be good in March. Thank you, Porter. Back to Bob. We're going a little bit off the beaten path here. How does Jacob Cole handle the red shirt season? Awesome. Great. Um, works out. I mean, every single day he's gotten stronger. Um, and uh, he, he, he embracing what you need to do when you sit out. I told you I've had a lot of guys sit out at Loyola that have just gotten better. And he, he some people, and, and now it's hard because no one sits out. But in, in the past, you guys sit out and you can, you know, just you're just thinking about the next year and you're just logging in time. Jacob has embraced every day, getting better. He's stronger. He's bigger. He's getting that knee healthy. Remember, he tore that ACL. Um, he's, he's you don't see any lagging effects of that. Um, on the, He runs the, he's on the scout team and with tremendous confidence, trying to give it to our our first team and second team all the, every day. But um, couldn't be happier with his progression and his mentality and his attitude during his uh, redshirt year. Appreciate it. Any additional questions for Coach? All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Porter. Thanks, Porter. Yep. Thanks, Porter. Yep.